let's change fashion industry. I speak about fashion. Um, uh, I'm a person who was always uh, looking for, you know, always for looking for giving meaning to his life, and um, and I was always unsatisfied with the status quo. I was always was thinking about like how to disrupt the status quo, uh, and um, so I wa always was in search of of these things. And and we just saw right now a lot of great uh, uh, talks uh, to all kind of angles of sustainability. Of, of education, and and this is really 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 inspiring to me. Yeah, uh, and there are I'm really thankful that there are so many people out there. I choose uh, my way is is, is the is is, a, is about fashion, because um, um, for me, uh, I consider fashion as uh, something which is really expressing individuality. So if we could improve here something, if you just a little bit improve here something, we could really force here something very big, something very powerful. So this is what I'm speaking about. So fashion in very end is something which really boils down to something, uh, boils down to who you really are. Whether you are aware of that or not, but this is the fact. It's like po politics. If, if, you, if you do not vote, you still go for voting, and basically probably you, this is the, the worst what you can ever give. So if you don't care about fashion, uh, it's fine, but you really communicate with that a lot. It's belonging. It's showing belongingness to society. Uh, so it's something which is, has to do a lot with traditions, uh, and it's synonym for individuality. Yeah. So showing who you are. Yeah. And um, the synonym for me also a lot for creativity. So what what inspires you? Showing me what what is inspiring you. Yeah? And it's expression. So this means it's showing to others. Yeah? Uh, it's something for me. Fashion is color. It's it's happening now, and it's all about people. Um, so, so, so I thought this is this is a thing which I really have to uh, take a closer look at. And I think like trend building uh, is it, it's a, I want to right, right now speak about trend building, and and it's if you really really think uh, think about it in a holistic way, we will find out that actually a trend always starts with one person. There was always one this genius, this talent who came up with this idea, with some idea, yeah. And if the idea is bad, it will not spread. If the idea is good, it will spread. More and more people will will adapt this trend, and it's it's at some stage it will become a trend. And then these guys coming, let's call this is the let's call this the fashion industry, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, really attempting, right? Right? Yeah. So these guys come up and say, guys. We have an idea. <laughs> it's our own idea, right? It's coming out of an organization. People are invisible. Yeah? And what they do is basically they bring it back to the market uh, with their very streamlined uh, way of doing business. I, can't, I, can't, I will speak about this later. Uh, so the talent is kept totally invisible, totally kept out of the process, and gets I exploited and actually misused, in my opinion. And the first thing of this is that he doesn't even know that that he's getting exploited. Because somebody just saw him on the streets, picks up, and he's not aware of that. Uh, and what the industry is doing, the industry is compromising this product for us. It's taking out the soul and water is down. Yeah? Try to visually show it by making it uh, gray. Yeah? Um, and we people, we us, yeah? especially us who are like probably creatives here and, and like forward thinkers, we are None of us sees the designer behind. We are not aware of the fact uh, uh, that there is a person behind. Yeah? It's kind of unimportant to us. Yeah? I don't know how you see it, but I do not want to give away my give away control uh, about my individuality, about cu my culture, what authority, about decision to these guys. And in the end, you know, we do that because it's it's. It's an industry which is huge. It's a 600 billion euro industry worldwide. So there's a lot of money in there. And these guys, of course, have a lot of money for marketing. And this is how marketing works, you know. Yeah? The more they tell us what we need and what we want, the more we really want it. And it's fine. This is how marketing is working. So I have, not, I have no problem with making business. I just uh, have a problem with, with keeping the, the people out of, of, this, uh, of this system. And they are really professional. They, they do the researches, they do uh, psychological analysis, statistics, just to find out 
who you are, what we need, and streamline it everywhere. Yeah? Well, they use these kind of women, pretty women for that, a huge advertisements. We know, we know all that. And in, in the end, we follow them. I would like to um, think a little bit more about like how this industry is really in the end working because I mean it's it's a complex industry. It's really hard in there, and actually they really build up a huge, huge uh, entry barrier. Um, like the whole system is a huge entry barrier. Uh, it's um, it's uh, for instance on a whole sourcing side and a whole production side, you have to reach huge quantities before you before a producer starts working with you. And and this this is not necessary is not necess not necessary uh, actually, but this is how it's working. Yeah, so it's really hard to to get into this uh, uh, to this uh, field. Yeah, um, so it's really really they kept very efficient. Yeah, and um, just for just to give you an example, for instance Zara or H and M, you all know them, right? And we actually many of us lo loves what they do. Uh, they actually, from my point of view, they are not just a fashion br uh, fashion uh, company. They are also like a bank. They're really very efficient in. In, um, in, for instance, you know, for instance, how they are working is if there is a real estate developer and, and building a f uh, shopping mall, they get into these shopping malls for free just because because they know that by that there are going to be a lot of people coming to the shopping mall and they can sell the rest of the of the uh, of the shops in the shopping mall. Uh, what they also do is, like from a cash flow point of view, they pay the producers so much later that actually they already have the money in from the retail. Yeah? So totally crazy from my point of view. Um, but again, I want to go back to the people because this is actually my, my main concern why I'm here. Is um, uh, so it's it's them in the end. Yeah, it's, it's them who bring in the idea. They are the bringing the color, the, the, the diver diversity, and, and the culture into into the system. And we do again, we don't see that. Um, and believe me, I, I I'm doing this. I'm doing a project, and I I see really a lot of talent out there. And we absolutely don't see that. We just see the tipping of the iceberg, or, or not even that. We just see the tip, the tip of the tip of the iceberg. And below that, there is, there is, there is a lot of talent. Absolutely, we don't see that. None of us. Um, and these people, yeah, they are, they are there. And the problem is they're standing in front of the wall. Yeah. Um, and this wall is actually a mixture of like hard and soft uh, um, uh, things. Yeah. So, like the hard thing is, which I already mentioned, is is that they are having these sourcing problems on a, and, a, and a production problems. They that they are simply just not able to produce because, for instance, if you want to make a collection as a fashion designer, yeah, first you have to you know make this pro uh, the step that you actually are picking money, which many of of us do not have. So once you, let's say you have it, you need at least to buy ten thousand buttons, for instance, before you, before somebody is supplying you with buttons. You at least need to produce 500 pieces of, of something uh, um, that you can produce it, and you don't even have the feedback for a market if, it's if if people would like to buy it. Yeah, and there are also soft uh, barriers like like social network. Yeah, this industry is so so closed that it's actually with the real social network is absolutely impossible to get in there. Yeah, and I believe that this is not necessary anymore. Uh, I mean, yes, you know, no, I don't want to go into this uh, in depth, but there's a lot of change happened out there. Uh, we have a lot of internet guys here, you know. Uh, the internet is, is a fantastic medium uh, to break up barriers. Uh, and, it, and we have a lot of proof of that for that. We have a proof of concept on in, in the music industry, uh, which you really, like, wiped away, like, within three years. Yeah? Um, and, and we also change our... our or behavior. It's very nice for me to see in the music industry how we change actually our purchasing behavior on, 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 on music, how we consume music. Because 10 years ago, we just knew big, brand, uh, big, big uh, um, bands, right? No, all of us know small bands as well. So this means we get more fragmented in there. Yeah? Um, I believe that in future, for me, it's a logical next step that we have, that we're going to also shift from this digital, digital goods also to physical goods. Uh, it's harder because it's physical. Yeah? Uh, but it makes totally sense to me. And we have all the elements in the internet to, to make this happen. Like the search costs. There are no search costs at all. Till now, if designers had huge search costs. They, they were acting within their geographical boundaries. And the internet doesn't have that. So this means a Viennese designer could search for, could, could have his customers maybe in Brazil. Yeah? Actually, we have, uh, have this one cur currently in our project. We, we see that, that, that ideas are loved by others from totally other regions. Um, 
the search costs are also, uh, no, sorry, and, and the, the sourcing and production costs, I mean, um, the whole, s or, or the, the boundaries, they are there, but if we act as a uh, collective, uh, we can break that uh, down as well. So for instance, if we go to producers and we go to sources and explain what we are trying to do here, uh, it's automatically attracting their attention and they're rather uh, uh, intend to work with us than if uh, s a single designer would go there. So this means what we have to do is we really have to start a movement here in, the, in this in the business. And the building of the community is also a zero cost. Huh? But and but why is this important? Because the community is, is like basically what is, is your your channel to, the, uh, to to sell your products. So this means it's very, very cheap in the internet to build this up. Uh, and I believe that that by this we can we can res redistribute actually the influence to the real generators of, of, of ideas. Um, this will definitely come. I don't know if it's going to be us, or so, uh, but it will definitely come in the next five years that uh, physical uh, on the physical market we will we change uh, as well. I mean, for instance, even in the in the automobile industry, we we have these kind of tendencies already. In the end, I mean, we're all going to profit of it because we'll see more color out there again. And we just not 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 just see the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg, but really see much much talent out there as well. And unfortunately, again, many of us are not aware of of of, of fashion, yeah? uh, but there is a lot of talent out there, and and they have definitely uh, they have definitely their market. Yeah? And um, so this is this is I'm I'm trying to do, and um, and thank you very much. <laughs> That's it.